after winning applause for a successful first plunge last week. NASA's Cassini spacecraft will conduct another dive between Saturn and its rings this afternoon. The mission has given scientists the closest look at Saturn's atmosphere. Astrophysicist and Hayden Planetarium director Neil deGrasse Tyson says Saturn is his favorite planet. I guessed it. Aside <laughs> from the Earth, his newest book is Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. It offers a pocket-sized primer of our understanding of the universe. Neil deGrasse Tyson, good morning. Thanks for having me back, guys. Nice um, to see you. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about this dive and your favorite planet. Cassini's been up there for a dozen years orbiting Saturn, and uh, it can't last forever, and it's time to finish out its mission. And to do this, it will, it will be taking death spirals down. <laughs> That's what it is. What can we learn? What are we going to learn about that? Well, Saturn? so it's the first time we've ever sent a spacecraft through the plane of the rings, right in between Saturn, the ball, and Saturn, the ring. So th initially, there was some concern about particles that would damage it, but it survived just fine, and we're going to keep doing this until September, when it takes its final plunge into the atmosphere, where it will vaporize, never to be seen again. Mm. You encourage people to look at the sky and, quote, ponder what cosmic truths lie undiscovered before us. Yeah. Ponder for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, yeah. what I tried to do, um, I tried to collect some of the most mind-blowing science, astrophysics, in this, in this small volume. It's a curated selection. So there are things you've heard about, you've read about, you've reported on. Dark matter, dark energy, exoplanets, multiverse. It is all there. And I try to tie a bow on it at the end with a cosmic perspective, where, such as the image of Saturn, what, one of those images portrayed Earth. Yeah. In yeah. between, and that's a cosmic perspective, like the pale blue dot that Carl Sagan. This is the thing about. about go ahead. No, the, the more we learn, we're more likely to find some kind of life on another. That's planet. that's a that's driving a lot of people's ambition yeah. as we look into space, especially in the search for exoplanets. Right. So I have a chapter called Exoplanet Earth, where I you get to think about Earth as though there were aliens trying to figure out if there was life on this planet we call Earth when viewed from a distance. Mm. And this gives you some insight into what, as to what our challenges are as we look beyond. You are a rock star in your world, Neil. Listen, they call you geek cool. You've got seven million Twitter followers and you say... Yeah, I, I wake up every morning and wonder how's that possible? Geek cool. Every day. Universe is under no obligation to make sense to you, but you do say it's important to know physical laws because they can give you confidence and they can give you power. And you tell a very simple story about hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I was I in was Pasadena, funny. California. I like hot chocolate. Yeah, me and too. Uh, I order hot chocolate with whipped cream, of course, and it comes, and I don't see any whipped cream. Oh, yeah. and, and, the, and, the, and the waiter says, yeah, we put whipped cream on it. It just sank to the bottom. And I said, uh, no, unless the laws of physics of the universe are different in your restaurant. There's no whipped cream on this. And he said, I'll show you. And he brings back a, yes. a, and puts in a dollop, and it bobs once or twice, and there it is, afloat, yeah. this, this, this batch that he put on top. And so, they're saying you're that guy. I'm not, yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, don't try to tell me. No. And the rule he should have known? Mm. Uh, well, no, so uh, here's something that's a little counterintuitive, that thick, heavy cream is lighter than milk, right. okay? Yeah. The, yeah, so that's why it floats. No, and you leave us with this. More bacteria live and work in one centimeter of your colon than the number of people in the world. No, the number of people who have ever been born. Who, who have ever been no, born. No, the reason why I report on that And I'm is thinking, because, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know stuff. why I need to know that, but okay. Yeah. Why is that important for us to know? Why. Okay. Because a cosmic perspective doesn't always have to come from the universe. Yeah. It can mm -hmm. come from chemistry. It can come from biology. And it's, it's an, a cosmic perspective Puts you, puts us in our place in the universe, and people can think that means you feel low. But this this comment about the bacteria in your gut, if you think you're at the top of the evolutionary ladder and you're in charge, just ask those bacteria because they're <laughs> thriving. In as far as they're concerned, you're a dark anaerobic vessel of fecal matter for them. <laughs> there you go. Okay, and if you if you just if you get them upset. You will know very quickly. I never thought of you as a dark <laughs> body. <laughs> a fecal matter. matter. Me yeah. neither. Yeah, the lower intestine. <laughs> Me neither. That's where they thrive. So it's a, it's a way to say, no, you're not really in charge as much as you think you are. But, Neil, you got your first telescope, and you looked in it, and you saw what? You were nine? Yeah, twelve. Nine, were you? No, no, I was at, visited twelve. the planetarium at age nine, and then um, age uh, 12, I had my first telescope. What did you see that fascinated you so that today you're sitting here? Uh, yeah, I saw Saturn for the first time. As, uh -huh. Yes, it has rings, and you can see them in the moons. And you come back subsequent nights, the moons are in orbit. And so this, this is a, an endless frontier. And when I think of, and, and I was attracted by how much we didn't know, uh -huh. more than how much we do know. 
Mm. And that's where the wonder and the mystery gets fulfilled and served. Speaking to that, what's the great, likely most important discovery to be made in your world? Uh, well, so we have, uh, so the, the James Webb Space Telescope, a follow-on to the Hubble Telescope, that is tuned to see earlier in the universe than any telescope ever before. So we've got, we've got missions lined up just to take care of it. You went at nine to Hayden, and now you run the place. That's yeah, cool. yeah. That's cool. Oh, Thank uh, you so much. That we roll. No. <laughs>